G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. A uh, little bit of a brief hiatus over the last couple of weeks, just because I've been super busy. But we're back uh, the other day with my reaction to my predictions at the start of the year. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. And today, going to have a look at trying to sort of grade or at least rank uh, how teams did this year based on their preseason expectations, I guess. So part of it's waiting, you know, their, their eventual ladder position and, and finals performance against how I thought they should have gone. But perhaps it's more important to look at what they would have been aiming for this year as a club. Now the season's been done for like three or four weeks now so I know this video is a little bit late but it is something that I wanted to do uh, before the actual season really wraps up and when I say the actual season I mean trades and drafts. It's always the still footy season until the draft uh, and then it gets really really quiet. So we are intending to do a bit more uh, draft content up until late November and then uh, we'll see what happens after that. But like I said in today's video it's going to be about looking at 2022 as a season and how teams went against their own expectations or at least what I perceive their expectations to have been. As always, guys, we are sponsored by Manscaped.com. They've been a wonderful sponsor uh, over the last couple of years, and that continues through this off-season as well. Make sure you do check out their website for all your male grooming needs. Uh, they've got a whole host and a whole variety of products now, not just the shaver, not just the ball wipes, which I uh, have here out of necessity. They've got boxes, they've got shampoos, they've got everything you can possibly think of for male grooming. So go check out their website for 20% off and free shipping. You can use the code TRUEFOOTY20. Let's get into the video. Sweet. All right. As you can see, guys, I am going to be using Tear Maker, a bit of a throwback. This uh, was a very popular thing for YouTube videos back in like 2019, 2020. I'm going to dust it off today uh, because I feel like it's good to have a, a good... I like visual aids in, um, in videos that I make, and I think that really contrasts well with the normal aids that I've been diagnosed with. So I'm just using a generic one with all 18 teams here. So how it's going to go is I'm going to uh, go through the teams one by one and put them in one of the five categories I've got. I thought about how to grow grade them? Would it be A, B, C, D? Uh, I decided to go with excellent based on their expectations this year. Very good, moderate, poor, and then a special section for OGs, which was the teams that did incredibly poorly. And uh, I'm sure you can imagine which ones I'm going to pick for that. There's probably, there's probably at least two or three. So let's get into it. How I like to start the video is kind of pick one for each category. So we have a bit of a base and there's some relativity. And then I can sort of, you know, I can even change it as I go based on, you know, one team seeming a little bit harsh than the others we'll get into it so the most obvious one for excellent would be your reigning premiers the geelong footy club top the ladder this year 18 and 4 they would have had some high expectations with their list and making a prelim last year and you know being competitive every year uh, and they won the flag quite easily by uh what was it 81 points in the end i think it was so there no one did better than geelong this year quite obviously regardless of their own lofty expectations they're excellent now we'll go with the wooden spooners they were an old g's team this year because of how poor they were. They had two wins, could have easily been one if not for some COVID restrictions. I don't know, it doesn't really matter because uh, them and West Coast were so far below the rest of the competition this year. It was a nightmare year for them. Uh, obviously, they're in a rebuilding phase, but even by those expectations, those lower expectations, they were nowhere near it. So they'll hopefully dust it off. I'm sure they can improve a bit next year, but it was old G's from them this year. A very good performance this year, I would say Fremantle. Uh, I don't put it in excellent. I'm going to reserve those for the teams that really smashed it this year. But Fremantle were not far off excellent. They're a high, very good. And the reason for that is they obviously bounced into finals this year. Not only that, but knocked some really good teams off away from home, as we all know. Beat the reigning premiers in Geelong. Uh, they beat, well, last year's reigning premiers, Melbourne, uh, in at, at the MCG. And uh, won a final as well. So you could easily make an argument for excellent. We'll, we'll put them in very good for now. And we'll come back to it potentially. A team that was moderate this year, I'm going to go with Carlton, and I think finishing ninth is uh, the the main symbol, I guess, for mediocrity, and, that, and that's probably harsh. They started the year 8-2, and two, looked like a top four side, looked like a premiership contender, dare I say it, uh, and obviously fell away poorly, and in the final round had their hearts broken by Collingwood and missed out on finals, but... You know, all things considered, if we look at their expectations at the start of the year, we wanted them to take a big jump this year. I think they pulled that off. It wasn't a very good season. If they'd made finals, it probably would have counted. 
But for me, I say it was a decent season. I think the overall more positive than negative, but missing out on finals the way they did is uh, set to burn them. And with a poor performance this year, I'll say Essendon are a good example of that. They're not an OGs category. I think I'm going to reserve that for the really putrid teams this year. Uh, but Essendon obviously made the finals last year and we're nowhere near it this year. And I don't think they made bottom four in the end. They might have just missed it by one. Uh, but either way, they looked, they were certainly in the bottom four at points this year. And we're nowhere near it, and they lost to West Coast, so how can you say that's a good season? Mind you, we are going to talk about Collingwood next, uh, who I think they are probably another excellent team, purely because you, we look at it pre-season expectations, and while Collingwood fans would probably have been more confident than the rest of us, and you know, you can see my thoughts on my own prediction in, them in the last video I did. Uh, either way, to bounce from you know second last to a prelim this year, very close to a grand final berth, uh, it was a fantastic first season for Craig McRae. I think that's an excellent season by my metric. The Adelaide Crows, oh, this one's a little tricky. I'd say a moderate season. It wouldn't be very good, would it? It wouldn't be very good. And that, that sounds really negative on them. I think they're tracking along really, really well. Uh, I was impressed by the way they, you know, withstood West Coast. And I, that's such a ridiculous sentence considering how much West Coast sucked. But I'm specifically referring to the Josh Kennedy farewell game. It was one of the Eagles' best performances all year. Josh Kennedy kicked eight. He was off the chain. Great game of footy. And Adelaide just, like, handled it really well. And uh, the Eagles played quite well, but I think Adelaide also impressed me in the way that they stood up and showed some resilience for a young rebuilding team. In terms of ladder position, it was about par for the course. You want slight improvement. That's what we saw. Um, but I feel like they're going to be good soon. But anyway, that's a topic for another video. Melbourne, I will also put in moderate. Okay, and the only reason that for that, I mean, they finished second. But they went out in straight sets. And when you're the reigning premier and you don't capitalize, well, if, if any team doesn't capitalize on finishing second, you can't have it as a very good season. Um, so I think that's fair to suggest. They were good to... I wouldn't say very good, but good throughout the home and away season. Certainly one of the better teams. But as I said in my last video, they haven't really recaptured that 2021 form uh, and ultimately cost them in finals. They didn't deliver when it mattered. So it's an okay season. You can't be too critical. The Western Bulldogs is a tough one. This might seem really harsh, but I might even say a poor year only because of their own high expectations. And that might sound like I'm... Um, digging them there, but I actually think it's more of a compliment because I think they're capable of so much more and that's evident by making the grand final last year. But I think ultimately if you'd sold them at the start of the year, you finish eighth and get 41 points up in an elimination final and lose, I, I think they'd be pretty disappointed with that. So I think by what they're capable of, they have some of the best players in the competition to, to bow out in the way they did. I'd say that's, I'd say they'll be really angry and a bit fired up for next year. So that's my rationale. West Coast, um, this one is clearly going to be an OGs team. They were, I'm not even going to argue necessarily that they were better than North this year. I'd say it was pretty much on a level. Um, their worst football was probably the worst in the competition, it's fair to say. Um, I don't know how much more there is to say about the Eagles. They sucked. Um, I'm somewhat confident we'll see an improvement next year. But even a, a decent improvement next year is, you know, they could finish on the same point of the ladder. Who knows? But either way, a clear choice for OGs. GWS is a tough one. Um, I would say they finished third last. Oh, I almost want to put them in OGs as well because there's no way a team, a best 22 as strong as that should be finishing third last. They were really poor. And I, I think it exceeds poor. I think they were... Oh, is that is that too harsh now, I'm thinking, because Essendon were higher than them the previous year and GWS finished below them. So maybe it's a poor. I, let's be honest. West Coast and North Melbourne are really on their own level. I'll say the Giants are in poor, and I think it's only going to get worse now. With the players they've lost, Taranto Hopper, Bobby Hill, uh, Tanner Brun as well was, was part of the solution to losing all those players two years ago, and now it's created another problem for him, but... I think poor is about right, but I think it's going to get worse. So they could be an OGs next year. Hawthorne's a tricky one. I don't know. I'm interested to see a fan perspective on this. You could say moderate. I'm think I'm leaning between moderate and poor, to be honest. Uh, they finished, I think, 13th or something like that on the ladder. Um, and they have high expectations. New coach, though. Clearly rebuilding, let's be honest. And that's been evidenced by their, their off-season moves, you know, pushing out Amira, Gunston, Tom Mitchell. Is it moderate? I, they didn't have a great season at all. I'd say maybe I'm being generous, but I'll say moderate because we probably shouldn't have expected too much more. I think I predicted them to finish 
13th and they might have finished 12th. I can't be too harsh on them. Let's say, let's say moderate. Brisbane, this is a tricky one. I don't think you could say they had a very good season. So to speak specifically, they finished 6th after finishing, I think, top 2 the last previous two years or top 4 out of the last three years, I think it was. For them, finishing 6th is a bit of a blow, but they did record a, a really good win in Melbourne, admittedly against the Melbourne side that wasn't performing well, but that still ticked a box for them. So I'd say it's at least moderate. I don't think it's very good. I don't think it's very good. Interesting. To, let me know your thoughts, but I think I think finishing sixth often by itself and making a prelim, uh, I, I can't say it's very good. I think Brisbane were capable of more. They wanted more from this year. So I'll say moderate. Port Adelaide, poor. And certainly not as bad as OGs. And the reason for that is because, well, A, they're way better than West Coast and North Melbourne. But again, it, we're not talking about who's better. We're talking about how they went against their expectations. So you could make a case that they were OGs because they started the year 0-5. But I think they came back well enough to make me think it's not completely ruined yet. I think next year... They've had some good recruits, Junior Rioli, Jason Horn francis I, I think they can come back. I think they'll play finals next year. But it's certainly nothing. It's certainly not better than Porf because they were 0-5 and missed the finals after you know being a really strong team the previous two years. So I think I'll settle on Poor. St Kilda, I'll probably also put in Poor. Jeez, the Poors and Moderates are really uh, starting to rise up. I think for them, they were 8-3 and three at the bye and then ultimately missed finals in 10th spot. Uh, I think for where their list composition is at, they should have been aiming for finals this year. I think it would be too generous to say it was a moderate year. I think St Kilda would be disappointed with the way their season ended, and that's evidenced by the fact that they got rid of their coach. So, poor's about right, right? The Gold Coast Suns, and again, this is a classic example of um, different expectations for different teams. So, they finished about 12th, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but I think that is their equal best ever season. So, you have to class that as very good. Okay, so Ben King goes down either late last year, I think it was in the preseason actually, gets done for with an ACL and uh, misses the entire year. One of their best players, certainly their best young talent, depending on what you think of Rowland Anderson. But either way, really competitive this year, improved to exactly what we were looking for from Gold Coast and Stewie Jew. Uh, I think it's very good. Let me know if you disagree with that. Sydney, I'm going to say, I'm going to say excellent for Sydney because... They're a young side, and I had a little bit of doubt on them this year that they would be able to back up their form. Um, I think I made the comment in my preseason prediction they'd be the hunted team, or one of the hunted teams, because they've got a great game plan, and teams will put them under the microscope. And they're a young side, which can be prone to you know, being up and down on the ladder. And you know, they answered that question perfectly by uh, finishing in the top four. I think they finished third in the home and away season and ended up in, as runners-up. And yes, they got belted in the grand final, but... Overall, you take the emotion of losing the grand final out. You've got to be very happy with that season, Sydney fans. I'm sure that's the case. So they're an excellent for me. And I'll say Richmond very good as well because they missed the finals quite poorly in 2021 and bounced it into seventh spot and nearly won an away final in week one to beat Brisbane. They fell short. However, they've bounced back into finals with a side this year that I don't think necessarily, you know, is the most talented. Uh, of course, they've got some stars. Some of them are aging. I think their midfield on paper isn't great. Uh, that's changed now. But if we're just looking at 2022, I think they should be very happy with the fact that they got back into finals. And obviously with their acquisitions now, they're, they're a contender again, I think, next year. So maybe that's a little generous. I think it exceeds moderate. I think they, uh, I think they were very good. All right, guys, that is my... Uh, rating. So Geelong, Collingwood, Sydney, the three teams who said had an excellent season. Are we, should we put Fremantle up? Maybe. This is my Eagles bias at work here. I don't know. I think obviously Geelong, Collingwood and Sydney, two of those teams made the grand final and Collingwood made the prelim. So I think I'll keep it as very good. But they had a, you know, out of the next three teams in very good, They'd be the next one up, I think, Fremantle. So we're along with them, Gold Coast and Richmond for you know big improvements this year. Teams that did okay, Carlton, Adelaide, Melbourne, Hawthorne, Brisbane, uh, for various different reasons. And then the poor teams this year were Essendon, the Bulldogs, the Giants, Port Adelaide and St Kilda, all of whom missed the finals except for the Dogs who uh, finished eighth and went out in week one after last year's runners-up position. And then the last two are self-explanatory. North Melbourne and West Coast were putrid this year, uh, even by their own expectations. 
absolutely terrible. So that's it, guys. That is how I graded this team, these teams rather, on this season. Let me know in the comments where I went right, where I went wrong. Um, I'm always intrigued to hear some nuanced opinions, particularly from fans of those uh, clubs who may know more about their team or have a different view of their expectations. So thank you for watching, guys. Hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, we will be doing, uh, I've got a few ideas for videos coming up and at the very least you can expect some draft content as it gets closer as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.